Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. We're with you too at the Virtual Excel Academy. Today we are featuring Basic Coding 2. This is a two-part session. The first part we had earlier, and you are welcome to find that on our archives at Paths to Literacy. This is our second part, Basic Coding 2, with Robin Lowell. She is a TBI and an AT specialist. She worked for the Washington School for the Blind Distance Education and now works for Intuit, Insight to Execution. She also works with Beth Dudica, who is joining us for this session as well. Please welcome Beth and Robin to our presentation today. And as you come into our chat room, please let us know who you are, where you're from, and maybe something about yourself. Our hostesses of the day, are Charlotte Cushman, Paths to Literacy and Perkins School for the Blind and Texas School for the Blind. Leanne Grillock, Director of National Outreach Services at APH. And I am Cheryl Kamehanan. I am a professor at Cal State LA. Welcome, everyone. I see you are all starting to put in the chat room who you are and where you're from. Welcome, Sharon, from Hawaii, I think. Welcome, Becky from Nebraska. Hello from Puerto Rico. Hello, Nebraska. Welcome, Ryan from Delaware. We are so glad that you are here to join us. And I'm going to turn it over now to Beth and Robin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Thank good you. morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Uh, yeah, my name is Robin Lowell, and I'm a teacher and a parent, and um, I like computer science and coding and science and all things STEM. So I'm excited to share with you some more coding things. Beth, introduce Hi, you. I'm Beth Dudica. I am a teacher and I just love computer science. And I've been working with Robin this last year on the Code Jumper project. So if you haven't tried Code Jumper yet, you, you probably will get your hands on it someday soon. And I'm so excited to be here today to help you learn a little bit more about computer science. Great. Awesome. Okay, so first things first, what I would like everybody to do, if you are a student, can you give me a wave or a thumbs up in the chat so we can see how many kids that we have to learn about some more coding skills today. So I'm excited to see that. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you what we're going to be looking at. You don't actually have to look at the PowerPoint. These are just Every, uh, everything we're going to be talking about. So we'll just make sure we say everything that we're doing um, as we go. So I'm going to first go into presentation mode because technology makes sure oh, lots of students. Okay. All right. Oops. Okay. So That's Martha sure. and Charlie and Susie, Sanaya. All right. Ryan. Okay, and going to share. Oh, whoop. all right. So, um, am I? Is so? Which screen are you? Are you? Uh, are you? You're not. A, you're not in presentation mode yet. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's see if we can get this to work. So, if you notice, are am I sharing in presentation mode? You're sharing the presenter part of the presentation mode as opposed to the audience oh, right. part. So if you guys remember from the first session, what we're doing right now is called debugging. We're making sure that we have everything correct and we have to go back and make sure things are working in my slideshow. So I'm just going to make life easy. Debugging. Here we go. And I am just going to share my screen one. And hopefully this will cooperate. There okay. we go. Uh, are work. we in presentation mode? Either nope. way, doesn't matter. We can just keep going this way because I'd rather just, just in the just in the building mode. Okay, that's fine. Actually, we're going to stay in building mode, and so that's okay because we're going to be going out of it anyways, and I don't want to waste all the time. So let's start with um, what is coding. So even if you're at the first session, it's always really good to review what we learned the first time. So let's think about what is coding. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure I can see. 
there you go. Um, coding is giving the computer instructions that they need to function. So a computer won't know what to do until we tell it what to do. So if we want to open a program, we have to have code in there that says, when I do this command, it'll open up the program. Or when you're typing, I press this key, please give me the letter R, whatever. So, and it's a creative process that is, you know, those, those codes are created by programmers, um, which we'll talk about computer scientists, programmers in a minute, of how to perform a task. And so we need to know how to tell the computer what to do. So we use different kinds of programming languages. There's all different languages, such as C Sharp, Java, block coding. So there's a whole bunch of different ways. So that's what coding is, telling our computer what it needs to do in order to function. So what is computer science? So computer science is the study of computers and their applications. So we have a lot of people out there, scientists out there that are working and studying at universities and at companies to figure out how to make computers do exactly what we want them to do. There are a lot of different areas of computer science, such as programming, and software engineering, so making programs like Zoom work. Uh, information theory, those are the thinkers. Those are the scientists that are going, what if, how can we make the computer um, recognize uh, text when we're speaking? So they're the thinkers and thinking of all the things computers can do. Algorithms, and we'll talk about algorithms in a, in a minute. That's kind of the steps that we take to get our computer to do what we want and databases collecting all sorts of information and putting it in one spot to make it usable so we have data out there but the key is to make it usable and then graphics so our computers a lot of times you can see a picture and that's like a whole area is how do we take a picture from the real world and make it show up on our computer so there's there's a lot of different areas in computer science that a lot of really smart people are working on so what are areas that we see this computer science applied? Information technology, so at your schools, and you probably have an IT person at home, either voluntarily or involuntarily, helping you figure out how to use the computer. So those are, those are the problem solvers, and they figure out, and they set up your computer, so the um, person at school who's helping you get all of your um, computer working, getting JAWS in, getting either Zoom or other magnification tools, all working inside your computers. Because, you know, just like everything, not everything works all the time. So we need to have our IT people helping us out. Manufacturing, building cars, they have all sorts of robots and technology helping us build all these tools. So everything around you, like your computer, the lights, all these things are are manufactured and we have a lot of smart scientists helping figure out how that works. Healthcare, you go to the doctor, they have technologies and we're hearing a lot about that now. Um, retail, you go to the store, you buy something and you, they check you out and they scan it. That's all computer science. Weather forecasting, now this is one of my favorite. Love watching what the weather is gonna do. So they have a whole bunch of science models and computer models helping us figure out what the weather is gonna be like tomorrow so we know what to wear and if we're gonna go outside and play. The arts, again, graphic design and music and all these different things have a lot of science behind them. Listening to the radio and being able to hear music either um, streaming or just on the radio takes a lot of technology behind it so we can do that. Finances, if you have a bank account, it's all technology. We don't write it on paper and hand them our money anymore. Most banking is done online and there's a lot of smart computer science going in behind it. And again, so that computer science behind it. So who are these computer scientists? There's a lot of people starting way back when, like in the 600s, like thousands of years ago, people were starting to talk about computer science, not computers as we know them, but mathematics and coming up with formulas and, and processes to help us get to where we are now. So again, we're talking about those computer scientists. They're the thinkers. They're the ones who are figuring out what we need to do. And then they work with the engineers and the programmers to make it happen. But really our computer scientists are our thinkers. So now I would like to pass this along to Beth and she can tell us about a really important computer scientist. 
Yes, thank you, Robin. Well, there is a woman who was born in New York City a long time ago, over 100 years ago, she was born in 1906, and her name was Grace Hopper. And Grace Hopper was a very curious child. She was so curious that it, when she was about seven years old, she wanted to know how an alarm clock worked. Now, I think back then the alarm clocks that people had were very different than maybe the alarm clock that you use right now, which might be digital or might need to be plugged into a electricity somehow to be used or the battery. And she wanted to know how her alarm clocks work. So I think, I'm guessing, she snuck around her house or somehow collected seven alarm clocks and took them all apart to compare them and to figure out how they were each built, how each one was different, and trying to understand how it worked. So she played with the pieces inside, she took them all apart, and then her mother found out and her mother made her put back six of them and give them back to whoever she borrowed them from. And she did let her keep one of them to kind of see if she could figure out and play with it. That kind of curiosity is what all of us should be doing all of the time because it really helps our brains develop that curiosity that then we will practice and implement as we get older in whatever we choose to do. And one of the things that Grace chose to do was to uh, go into the field of mathematics. And when she was 16, she decided she was gonna to apply to a college called Vassar. And guess what? She didn't get in. And so instead of just hanging her head and walking away, she tried again the next year. And the next year when she was 17 years old, so for most of us, we haven't even graduated by high school by then, she was accepted to Vassar University. She got a degree from there and then she went on to study at Yale. She ended up getting a PhD, which is a doctorate at Yale University in mathematics. She joined the Navy, which at this time, <clears throat> first of all, in the, in the early 1900s, women didn't even have the right to vote. So there were a lot of women who didn't go to college and a lot of women who did not join the Navy. So she was rare to begin with. But then she joined the Navy and she became um, she started working at a laboratory in Harvard University on a couple of different projects for the Navy. And the Navy, the United States Navy, had a computer. And it was kind of like a computer system because it took up an entire room. It was such a big computer. When you think about the size of a phone these days, a smartphone, I mean, imagine thousands and thousands of them filling up an entire house almost with it would be one computer with less power than what you're holding in your phone. And so she was at the very beginning of all of this, trying to figure out how those computers worked. And one day she was trying to solve a problem because the, they were telling the computer to do something. And, and then there was a group of people trying to figure out why the computer wasn't doing what they told it to do. And lo and behold, she walked around and there is a photograph of her, I think up on the screen right now that Robin has been sharing. And you can kind of see an example of, oh, this is only just one part of that gigantic computer that takes up a whole room. <clears throat> this is just an example of that computer, but. Um, Beth, can, can you describe in detail what the picture looks like for <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> yeah. So it's as tall as she is and it takes up, it, it reminds me of a, of a gigantic washing machine because it looks like there's two circle things on the side of it and then there's a whole bunch of buttons at the top and it looks like all maybe all metal and then there's it like maybe it's part of a row and then the row seems to wrap around the back side almost like it fills the entire room and I, I can't I've seen other computers kind of like this so I'm I'm trying to go off of my imagination on that what, what might be filling behind where she is standing but she's standing and touching the front of it Almost like, it almost looks as big as a refrigerator to me, a gigantic refrigerator. And then there's probably, I don't know, a hundred of them in that room maybe, all stuck together and that makes one giant computer. That is less, at that time, was really powerful, but right now it's less powerful than what you're probably watching the Zoom call on right now. 
pretty amazing. So this is one of the early, early, early computers. Anyway, so she was, she was walking around trying to figure out why this computer wasn't working. And she walked by this one area and she noticed this one area wasn't working. She looked a little harder and she found a moth, a little bug inside of the computer. And it was causing a problem because the bug was messing with the electrical system. And so someone asked her what was going on and she said she was, she found a bug. She was debugging and she literally found a bug inside the computer. But from that point on, we've been using the word bug to explain when we find a problem with our computer or when we find a problem in our code or our, our level of directions when we're trying to tell a computer to do something. Sometimes we, well, lots of times we make mistakes. And if we make a mistake and we kind of don't know where it is and we're trying to figure out where we might have made a mistake, we call that a bug or we are in the process of debugging or trying to fix the mistake. And it all started because she literally found a bug in the computer, which was kind of funny, but we still use that term today. And in fact, even though Grace Hopper has passed away, she died in 1992, um, we honor her in lots of different ways. She was a rear admiral in the, in the Navy. So she lived a whole lifetime, a whole career in the Navy. She tried to retire and they called her back. Um, but there are lots and lots of ways we honor Grace Hopper. There are streets named after her. There are scholarships named after her. There is an entire college at Yale named after her. There's buildings named after her. There's a yearly conference that um, people put on to celebrate her and her accomplishments because she spent her whole life from, from the time she found the bug until the time she died. She worked in computer science as one of the early, early adopters of trying to understand how computers work. So a huge inspiration to us, I think, because she, she, she just kept going at it. Um, did I miss anything, Robin? Did we get everything about Grace Hopper? No, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, so just the other picture on the, on the screen that we have here next to her in her younger years, messing with the computers is Grace Hopper as an older woman. Um, sitting in her formal Navy uh, uniform with all of her decorations and all of her commendations and her hat. And behind her is the American flag. So we get to see her from a young age all the way through working all through her later years, which is pretty amazing. What a mm -hmm. great story. There's and a lot of um, books actually written about Grace Hopper. Um, if you want to Get a, if you get a chance to ever check one out from the library, there's quite a few books and quite a few videos on the internet about her. Um, so if you want to learn more, just type her name in the search box. I'm sure you'll find quite a bit. Absolutely. So thank you. Um, there's a lot of other computer scientists out there that are worth looking into, like um, Alan Turing is another amazing story of, uh, of a computer scientist. Again, that really thinking and, and processing and figuring out what we need to do to make all these computers work. Okay, so we heard some vocabulary in there. We heard debugging. So let's talk a little bit more about some of this vocabulary that we have. So some of this is reviewed from last week. So algorithm. So anybody know what an algorithm is? Beth, would you mind just um, uh, monitoring the chat and seeing what we come up with? So students, if you could- you you could see in there of, of ideas of what an algorithm is and maybe read those guys out for us. Let's see, so I'm sure there's little, there's fingers flying on those keyboards telling us what an algorithm is. There we go, I'm gonna have to move my chat to the other window. Let's see. We have anything there yet? Let's Not see. yet. Okay. Well, let's just keep moving. Let's just talk about that. So it's interesting. So an algorithm, we get there's some really like in detail de definitions, but I'm going to go with a simple one. It's a list of steps to complete a task. So really thinking about an algorithm, we do them all day long without even thinking about them. Tying our shoes. First, we put our shoes on, and then we tighten our laces, and then we tie them. If we're going to get ourselves a bowl of cereal to eat, we don't just start pouring the cereal. There's a lot of things that, that would be really messy that we have to do ahead of time. Get the bowl, get the spoon, 
then pour the cereal. Otherwise, you just don't get to enjoy it. So that's what an algorithm is, a list of steps to complete a task. Debugging. So we just learned where that came from because it's kind of a funny term. Finding errors in a computer program. Yeah, that Grace Hopper found that moth in her computer. A sequence. When one action is followed by another. Again, if we're pouring ourselves a bowl of cereal, first we get the bowl, then we get the spoon, and then we get the cereal. So there's all the sequence of events that we need to do. A variable. So these are the next two words are really what we're going to be focusing on for the second half of, of our time together today. It's a placeholder for a piece of information that can change. So if we're talking about cereal, do we have to have the same cereal? Is there only one cereal in the whole entire world? If you ask some people, they would say there's only one worth eating, but <laughs> we actually have a lot of options. So again, there's that idea of a variable. Things can change. You wear different clothes every day, but you still wear clothes and all these different things. So we're gonna dive more into what a variable is. Conditionals. So a statement that will run under certain conditions. This is interesting. So it's really thinking about something that happens if all the setting is correct. So we'll talk, we'll talk more about that. So Beth, anything you want to add for variables or conditionals? Uh, no, I did. I, the only other example I have for variable that always gets me when I do laundry because I have three boys and every now and again, I buy them all the same shirt. Mm. They all match and they feel the same. They have the same buttons in the same place, but the variable is I was able to buy three different sizes because they're all different sizes. Mm -hmm. So it's another example. Yeah, that's a great example. Oh. That is a great example. I know we have all sorts of different size socks here. We all wear them. But <laughs> I can't wear the eight year old socks. <laughs> and he shouldn't wear the size socks that are 14. So um, yeah, so there's all these different changes. So mm -hmm. now, this is actually where we're going to start. This is going to be really fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game. So if you are familiar with a, uh, the game Mad Libs, go ahead and put an emoji in the chat. If you know what a Mad Libs is, go ahead and throw that information right in here. You can also put a Y in the chat. Sometimes Ys are easier. Oh, Y, yes, that's a great idea. Just put, yeah, a Y. Or a smiley face, yeah. Yeah. Faith knows, Ann knows, Quilly knows. Kyle, some people are not so sure, and that's fine, because that's why you're here. We're going to go through a lot of this. Awesome. Oh, and well, if you've never experienced a Mad Lib, you are in for a fun ride. Abs. Oh, I went upside down smiley face. I like that one because they can get pretty silly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay, so Mad Libs, we're actually going to let me change my slide. We're going to play. Great, great example. She's already given a couple of definitions for algorithm and debugging, and I see variable on here. Those are excellent um, definitions. Nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a story as a group and everybody gets to um, I'd like to stick with students, but we can we can open it up to if we're not getting enough answers, but we'll have students um, in there put in words. So we have different parts of speech. We have nouns, adjectives, verbs, um, adverbs, and we'll describe these as we go. So we know what we're talking about. But again, we only, there's more than one noun. So what we're gonna do is build a story. And the only part of the story that you need, that you get to know is the variable. So I'm gonna ask for a specific type of information and we're gonna type it into the PowerPoint and Beth is gonna insert it into the story. And then at the end of, the, end of all these, figuring out all the words, we're then going to read the story and see if it makes sense. So thinking about those variables, it'll create a great story, but is it the right answer? It may be funny, but it is the correct answer. And some of them we can then figure out what would be a better choice in that situation. Okay, so our first word is a noun. So in the chat, if you could give me any noun, so that's a person, a place, or a thing. 
So just go ahead and write in the chat a person, a place, or a thing. And get well, creative, because this the, the more creative you are with a person, place, or thing, the more fun this ends up being. Let's yeah. see. Rock. Oh. oh. All kinds of options here. Oh. Let's see. All right. Pickles. A zoo, a salon, a grocery store, a school, a chicken. Oh my goodness. These are fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with chicken. I'm going to just right. put in chicken for our noun. Ooh, hot sauce. I like that. So now the next one is an adjective. So this is a different variable because this is in a different spot. So we're looking for a different type of thing. So an adjective is a describing word, something that, uh, ooh, Beyonce, I like that. Ooh, we have shiny. Shiny is a good adjective. It describes something. You can say that um, the, the, the metal is shiny or it can be a texture, it's rough. So any kind of describing word, ooh. Dazzlingly. Ooh. Loud. Oh yeah, these are great adjectives. Hard. Awesome. Stinky. <laughs> I'm gonna go with stinky. That one's fun. Let's see. That'll be some good laughs. Okay. So the next one we're gonna look at is another noun. So this is also a person, place, or thing. So, oh, curly, brownish, bent, big. Oh. I see table. I'm going to go with table. Okay. Now we have, we actually have four nouns in a row. So just keep those nouns coming. Curbside. Pizza. Ooh, all right. I'm going to go with pizza. All right, Beth. What's another one? Oh, I see one because I just got one this week is dog. All right. Okay. So we need Should we do more. that as, um, is it need to be a plural noun? I think we no, have hang one. On. It can be. All right. So um, we have one more. We need one. Oh, gum. Let's put gum in there. And just so you guys know, the person that's typing those four has four students with them. Oh, oh got oh, it. Oh, OK. OK, that makes sense. I, was, I was, wasn't sure. Scratchy. Oh, I like that. Ooh. Oh, actually, it's scratchy. We do have an adjective coming up. Okay, so, and now, um, now let's, we need to put something in there. This one's very specific, a type of tool, some sort of tool. Type so we have a hammer. That's fun. Type of a tool? Yeah. Well, what, what are all the options for tools? Let's see, a knife? Screw, a drill, an awl. Ooh, Ooh yeah. A oh. slate and stylus. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. <laughs> you, do you need to describe a slate and stylus? A slate and stylus is a, is a, let's see, we describe it. It is a very low tech way, because we have different levels of tech, high tech down to low tech, way to mm -hmm. create braille. And we did a lesson yesterday on it. Yeah, cool. All right, and so now we need a plural noun. So it's just more than one. We can and so I have it. a, let's do bolts. I like that, bolts. Bolts. More than one bolt. All right, okay, and then we have one more noun. Oh, we've been given a handful of nouns. I know. Cellular, sheet. Hobby Lobby, <laughs> a t-shirt, speaker, printer. Oh, cornbread. Oh, let's do that one. That's fun. All right. Cornbread. Oh, I'm getting hungry. It's almost lunchtime where I live. Oh, I know. Okay. And now we have an adjective. Okay. Another describing word. Mm-hmm. 
weirdest tasty um, i'm thinking uh, people are getting hungry and delicious of <laughs> course Woo. gooey we brownish go? looking back curly Ooh, i see slimy Ooh, let's go with slimy slimy shrunken tongue. rigid slippery you guys are slimy. good these are great yeah, slimy words. okay well let's go with slimy because that'll be fun okay so now we just built a story we we had all these areas of variables so i'm going to click to the next slide and what these variables of noun and adjective were dumped into the story and Beth is going to go ahead and read it to us and see what our story turned out like. All right, be prepared to laugh. All right, so this is the story where we had all of those variables in place. We stuck them in with the words you just chose. So this story, um, let's see, it doesn't have a title, does it, Robin? It's no, planting a vegetable. Not. It's about planting a garden. Yeah. Plant. Okay, here we go. Planting a vegetable garden is not only fun, it also helps save chicken. Chicken was one of our variables. <laughs> <laughs> you will need a piece of stinky land because stinky <laughs> was our variable. You may need a table to keep the pizza and the dogs out. If you think I'm not making sense, it's because we put those silly words in there. As soon as gum is here, you can go out there with your slate and plant all kinds of bolts. <laughs> you plant bolts in the garden. Then in a few months, you will have corn on the <laughs> corn on the cornbread and big slimy flowers. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what I'd like actually you guys to do is let's pick one sentence and let's um, in the chat. So the variables, we the words we picked, those variables, what we decided to insert in that variable area, such as a noun, adjective, or a tool. Let's put in a word that actually makes sense to what we're trying to do. Because if you put in all sorts of variables, they don't always make sense like this, as fun as it is. Okay. So let's do the first sentence. And remember our word that we put in there, our variable, is um, a noun. So planting a vegetable garden is not only fun, it also helps save, and then a noun should be there. We put chicken. But what do you think could go there? So in the chat, just write a word that you think would make sense of vegetable gardening is fun, but what does it also do? What can you save? What can you save um, by planting your own garden? See if planting you can a vegetable that. garden is not only fun, it also helps save blank. And we put in chicken, which was silly. But let's see, what else does it help you save by planting your own vegetable garden? What other variable could we put in there that might make more sense? Ooh, I see a couple. We have Oh, it might save trips to the store. It might save, um, keep you safe from chemicals. Mm -hmm. It might save you time. It might help keep you from starving. These are such great answers, everybody. Save money. Um, it might help save you money. It might help save the planet. Oh, yeah. So there are lots of benefits. And it's so funny because Nobody actually said chicken, <laughs> but it is silly to substitute the word chicken, isn't it? So those variables, again, it's a placeholder for a piece of information. So we stuck in, we stuck in chicken as our information, but look at all these other things that could, you could stick in and some of them make more say, more sense than, than other ones. So great job guys. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is a written version of, um, what a variable is. So now let's go to the next thing. And so we learned about debugging and we're actually going to try something. We'll see how it works. We're going to have to debug. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to switch gears. So this is what computer scientists do. They try something out and then if it doesn't work, 
than they think and they use their theories and move to a different way. So we're actually going to sing a song all together where um, we're going to use variables for different parts of it. And um, the experiment is we're going to be taking everybody off mute. So we all have to be very thoughtful. Um, and everybody gets to um, sing with me. It's a repeat after me song. So which means I will sing the line and then everybody sings it back. We're going to try it with everybody off mute for one verse and see how it goes. So what I need is all of the students to raise their hand. I know teachers, you want to talk, but this one's not for you. <laughs> I need my students to raise their hands. I'll give you a moment. I want to be able to find you. The easiest way is raising your hand. Awesome. So let's let those come in to find all my students and I'm going to start hitting the allow to talk. All you have to do is make sure your microphone is on, but don't talk yet. Let me get you all allowed to talk. Uriah, Sanaya, Charlie, Anne, Mina, Helena, any other students? Raise your hand. And, and Quilly, that's awesome. They can just sing along to each other and laugh and have a good time. <laughs> that is okay. That's fantastic, because I get it. <clears throat> okay, you've got a bunch of students with their mics on. Okay, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to sing a line. I'm going to pause a second, then everybody repeat it back to me. And so the song is Boom Chicka Boom. And the way the variable I know this song. Me too. <laughs> and and so basically the variable in boom chicka boom is the style. Boom chicka rock a chicka boom. <laughs> okay, so everybody, so everybody's quiet for just a minute. I'm gonna sing the first line and then everybody sing it back. Ready? I said a boom chicka boom. 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 I said a boom a chicka rock a chicka rock a chicka boom. I said a boom chicka rock a chicka rock a chicka boom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. One more time. One, one, more one more time. Awesome. Okay, now our variable is we're going to do cleaning style. So listen, because I've changed the words in here. Ready? I said a broom sweep a broom. 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 I said a broom a sweep a mop a sweep a mop a sweep a broom. I said a broom sweep a mop a sweep a broom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. One more time. One, One more time. time. This time we're changing the style, so our variable is moving to astronaut style. Uh -huh. I said a launch me to the moon. 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 I said a launch me, shoot me, launch me, shoot me, launch me to the moon. I said a launch me, shoot me, launch me, shoot me, launch me to the moon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. One more time. One more time. All right. This time we are doing thunderstorm style. So again, our variable is changing the words that have to do with thunderstorm. Ready? I said a boom, crush a boom. 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 I said a boom, a crash, a flash, a crash, a flash, a crash, a boom. I said a boom, a crash, a flash, a crash, a flash, a crash, a boom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. No more times. No more times. Nice job, guys. Oh, that was awesome. 
Don't fall. Awesome. So, okay, everybody can go back on mute. Okay. Awesome. So, in that a song, a lot of times, actually, you see a lot of variables in music because you have a chorus and then you have a, um, what, what, what's the next part called? I can't think of it, but things change. They're similar, but they're different. So this is one example where we're putting variables in and making changes based on a placeholder. So our placeholder is, I said a boom, crash, a boom, but we started out with a boom, chick, a boom. So thank you, a verse, it just escaped me. So I appreciate that, I knew it was something. All right, so we're gonna move on from variables to conditionals. So a statement <clears throat> that will run under conditions. So um was i was gonna do this part you gotta do the fun part miss beth so let's think about this so we've been talking about food a lot because you know what i don't know eating is really fun and and it takes up a lot of our thought process of what we're going to eat so lunch time it's lunch what are we going to need so uh, this is kind of challenging a conditional statement so let's go through one that we'll, we can easily think about so the conditional statement is you are going to eat liquid food. Hmm, going to eat liquid food. So in the chat, if everybody can put in there, for lunch, what's a liquid food that you might eat? So let's see and wait and see what everybody throws in there. Smoothie. Yep, we got soup, we got a smoothie, chicken soup, Very good. Yes. And at my house anyway, today it is pouring down rain. It is yucky and cold and wet. So a nice comforting bowl of soup sounds really good. So soup sounds lovely. Oh, yogurt. Wait a minute. Tacos. I have a question about tacos. Is tacos a liquid? And if it is, what part of a taco is a liquid? I can, I can think of parts of it. Oh, mashed potatoes. Yeah. Sauce. Does ice cream count? Oh, heck yeah. Ice cream counts for everything. <laughs> Not a super healthy lunch food, but. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Cereal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only if melted. <laughs> Love it. So we have a smoothie, a shake, a walla, milk. Yes. So what do we know about? So let's figure out uh, those conditional statements. So we have to know what's true so that if then, you know, if true or if false. So to know if we're going to eat a liquid food, if it's true, you will need a bowl and a spoon. Is that true? You'll need a bowl and a spoon if you're going to eat a liquid food. Unless you want a mess. I don't know. So it's like <laughs> why or no. So is this a true statement? If you will need a bowl and spoon if you're going to eat a liquid food. Yes. No. Oh. False. So we we do one. not need a bowl and a spoon if you're going to eat liquid food. Mm hmm. I'm curious about that. Me too. If you say false. Oh, so there's other options again. So we're just looking at this from a yes or no perspective. So yeah. not looking at the other variables of options a straw, but thinking about this, this statement says a bowl and a spoon. So looking at just the bowl, would we need a, do you need a bowl for a liquid? Yes or no? We have to contain our soup. Otherwise, like what happened at my house yesterday, um, milk and water tend to spread out if it's not contained. Yeah. And um, so, these so, kids are creative, Robin, because they're coming up with other alternatives besides a bowl and a spoon. Yes. And that's actually true. You are all thinking on the right, the right um, thought process here, which is if you have something liquid, to be able to eat it without making a gigantic mess, you need something to contain the liquid and possibly something to eat it with. So we kind of simplified it in this conditional statement and we sort of made a basis of like, okay, if you're gonna eat something liquidy, you're gonna need something to put it in and maybe a spoon. Yeah. And so 
for the purpose of, we want you to understand what a conditional statement is for right now. Yes, you are all right. You could, you could probably use some alternatives, but for this example, just roll with us for this example, and then you'll get to be creative on the next one. Um, in, in this example, so this with just a Y or an N, just thinking about a bowl and spoon, if it is liquid, do you need a bowl and spoon? So that's just a Y or an N, yes or a no, and then we'll be creative. Sometimes. And you could think of bowl and spoon like basically a container, right? All of you are sort of saying you need, you need something and a way to maybe drink it. So it could be a mug and you wouldn't need a spoon, but you need some way to contain the liquid. Otherwise we would be walking around <laughs> like licking the floor. <laughs> Looking, you just pour the soup on the counter and just, you know, lick it up. I just, I'm not sure that the manners would be there if we, if that's what we were encouraging. So containers mm -hmm. are encouraged. So yes, we do. This is a conditional statement. So then if false, then you will not need a bowl and spoon. So this is that other part. So our true statement is you will need a containment unit because it is liquid. And if false, you will not need a containment unit if it is liquid. So there's that. You can kind of check your answer with that false to see if, see if it works. Mm -hmm. So let's wrap our head around this. It's gonna be easier to wrap our heads around when we go through an example. So Beth, take it away. All right. So here's where you can get a little bit creative. But remember, with a conditional statement, you are, you are making something into a yes, or a no, you're making it into a true or a false. And the reason we do this is because computers, the, the way that we talk to computers and give them directions is, is by giving them a series of yes or no options. So we, we make a statement and then the computer reads the statement and if it's yes or true, they go one way. If it's false, they go the other way. So let's try one for lunch. So think about what you are going to be eating. And it can be imaginary, it can be today, tomorrow, something you might eat for lunch. And then you're going to make a statement. And we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to kind of put some, think about this first before you put it all in the chat. The statement is going to, to fill in the blank here. I am going to eat blank for lunch. Okay, that is the statement. And then, if it, you have to think, so you have three parts to think about. You have to think of your statement, what you're gonna eat for lunch. The second two things you have to think about is if it's true, if that's a true statement that I'm going to eat blank for lunch, then you will need a what? And if it's false, you will not need a blank. Now, this is where it gets tricky because a lot of times kids, if it's true, they wanna say, um, they want to say two different things. You need a this or a that. But conditional statements are not a this or a that. It's a this or a not this. So if I'm going to eat blank for lunch, if, it's, if that statement is true, I need this or I will not need this. So you're really only thinking about one other thing. And then you're, you're, you're making it binary by giving it two options, a with it or a without it true or a false mm -hmm. so robin help me out here let's see we've got a bean and cheese burrito for lunch all right Ooh, that sounds so good oh i know right oh. okay so i am a person who i kind of love salsa so for me personally i am going to eat a bean and cheese burrito for lunch for me if it's true i will need salsa if it's not true I will not need salsa. Okay, that is how conditional statements work. It's not um, I will eat mac and cheese or I will eat a sandwich or the other options. It's the yes on salsa or no on salsa. Right. So let's see, can anybody come up with something else that they might eat for lunch? And we will, if you're not sure about your conditionals, we can help you come up with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a really good one. Yeah. Is that? Nilsa, a steak. So I will eat, I'm going to eat steak for lunch. Tacos. Oh, I love me some tacos. <laughs> I'm going, so let me go with the steak example because I see fork, knife, and spoon written down. I'm going to eat steak for lunch. 
if it's true, if that statement is true, I will need a fork and a knife for lunch, or I will need a fork and a knife. If false, I will not need a fork and a knife. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, and it's tricky because you, you wrote the word spoon. So I'm wondering if you're thinking that if it's false, you will not need a spoon, but that would not be a conditional statement because that is bringing in another variable. And the conditional remember is only about a true or a false. It's not bringing in another option. <laughs> oh, I love me a Frappuccino. Ooh. So let's go with the pizza one. So Uriah and Charlie, um, I'm going to eat pizza for lunch. So if that's true, what do you have to have that you won't be eating pizza if you don't have it? So, hmm. Oh, very good. Yes, yes. So a napkin, I think that's a great example. If I'm gonna eat pizza for lunch, I have to have a napkin. So not, the statement. I get to eat pizza. So this, so the conditional statement would be, I'm going to eat pizza for lunch. <laughs> if that is true, I will need a napkin. If it is false, I will not need a napkin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, cheese sandwich. So if you're going to have a cheese sandwich, what do you have to have to make that true? And Anne wrote underneath cheese. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you don't have cheese, you're not gonna have a cheese sandwich. Uh, bread. 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 Very yeah. good. It's hard to have a sandwich without bread. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to eat a cheese sandwich, if true, then you'll need bread. If false, you will not need bread. If you're not having a sandwich, you don't need bread. And again, this is all very personal because I see someone, let's see, Quilly or maybe um, another student there, if you're going to eat a salad for lunch and you have good manners, you might need a fork. So you might say, I'm going to eat a salad for lunch. If that statement is true, I will need a fork. If it is false, I will not need a fork. Now, if you're someone who does, is, lives in my house, I have a child who doesn't use forks very often because yeah. He's still working on his manners. So he would not choose that conditional statement because he would not believe it. See, this is where it sort of gets a little bit personal for you. Right, because you say, I don't, need a, I don't need a fork to eat a salad. Mm -hmm. I've got 10 forks right on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up and eat it. Oh my gosh, very nice. Oh, pancakes. I'm curious about pancakes. So Uriah, tell us what you have to have. What's gonna make it true to eat pancakes? Mm. Yeah, again, this one can be interesting. Mm -hmm. Wondering what um, um, you, need, you need a knife and a syrup and to cut the pancakes. A oh. knife and a fork. A knife and a fork. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so we had somebody else say, if true, then you will need syrup. And mm -hmm. then Uriah wrote a fork and a knife. So yes, for somebody, in order to eat pancakes, they have to have syrup. They're not going to eat the pancakes if they don't have syrup. So that's a great one. Ooh, an omelet. So M says, I will make an omelet for lunch. If true, I will need eggs. If not true, right, you're not making an omelet if you don't have eggs. Yeah. Very good. I think we're starting to, to get this, that these are these... True or false? Mm hmm And mm -hmm. see, oh, I love it, Joanne. Like everybody has their own preferences with certain things. And so you can each make your own conditional statement. And this is where computers are really awesome because they don't care. They're only doing what you tell them. So if you were telling your computer, I am going to eat pancakes for lunch. And in my house, we don't often make pancakes without chocolate chips in them. And oh. so my kids would tell their computer, I'm going to eat pancakes for lunch. If that is true, then I will need chocolate chips. If it is false, then I will not need chocolate chips. Yes. Oh, I'm coming to your house for pancakes, Beth. <laughs> that sounds good. So yeah. I'm going to do mine because we decided this weekend we're making donuts from scratch. 
first oh, time ever. So if I'm going to make donuts, then I will need powdered sugar. If false, I will not need powdered sugar because mm -hmm. we're going to make frosting for our donuts. So we have to have that. Actually, so this is a really good example of what, the, what one of these things. So for donuts, I was really struggling to find yeast. It's really hard to find right now. So we wanted to make donuts. We wanted to make bread. So let's go with the bread example because this actually happened last weekend. So I am going to make bread. If true, I will need yeast. If false, um, I will not need yeast. I couldn't find it, so I couldn't make it. So it, this, this, um, I ended up at false, and then we had to go a different route because we couldn't find yeast in order to make bread. All right. Well, you guys, this is amazing. You did so fantastic um, variables. So I'm gonna do a quick pop quiz. So can t somebody tell me in the chat, what is a variable? What do you remember about a variable? Thinking about our Mad Libs and um, boom, chicka boom. What do you think about uh, what a variable is? Those are hard words to define. I mean, mm -hmm. hmm. So just what's something you remember about it? A missing number, right, a variable, so the missing, a missing piece. So do variables have to all be numbers or can we use, can variables mean other things as well? Hmm, thinking about our Mad Libs. Uriah said something that is made up and I, okay, so are you thinking something is made up that a variable, we have a lot of different options to put in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, lots of Choices. choice, mm -hmm. missing factor. Yeah, th those are great. Those are super great. Unidentifiable. So at first it is, so if a variable is unidentifiable, can we work thinking like, you know, in terms of math, can we then solve for that issue? Can we then identify what our variable is going to be? Yes, exactly. That actually is a good, a good thing to bring up. It's that at first it's unidentified, and then we go through the steps to figure out what it needs to be. Just like that story about the um, uh, garden. And obviously we would say chicken, and we wouldn't be planting bolts. So figuring out what the right solution for that variable is. Nice job, guys. So actually, real quick before we run out of time, because we're just about done, is how can I do more coding at home? So there, there's options and I put in some information here of three different organizations um, that you can go explore online for more coding. So there's CodeJumper, um, which is um, brand new. Uh, it's a physical coding language that was designed by Microsoft. They came up with the concept and then APH has actually done all the work around it. There's tons of lessons, but it is physical and it's auditory and there's a kit that goes with it, but there's a lot of unplugged things to explore at the CodeJumper website and learn more about coding. So it's really pretty fun. Code.org and there's a lot of you have heard about Code.org and there's options there with all levels of accessibility built in to Code.org. Um, there's Make Code and I have two links on here. So those are all online fun projects. And I put a link to make code, but also to the accessibility to figure out how it works with, um, with JAWS and different levels of accessibility and see if this is something that can work for you. It may not work for everybody, but there's an option to go in and check out and see what will work. So there's um, some things for you guys to go check out more. And just throughout your day, when you're thinking about what you're doing, ask yourself, is this a variable? And, and go through the steps, is this a conditional? Because you'll find it in the world around you. Same with algorithms and debugging. So yeah, thank you guys. You were amazing. You had so many really, really great ideas and thoughts around this. And thank you for singing with me. That was super fun.
Well, thank you so much. This was great. And yes, we tried our experiment. And Robin, I'm so glad we tried our experiment to have everybody speak. That was new and very fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks so much. We have Can another you hit way. stop share, Robin, for me? Oh, oh, yes. Stop share. There you go. Go for it, Cheryl. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Let me tell you what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, we have a session that's going to be really interesting and a lot of fun, especially for those of you who are history buffs. This was a requested seminar or session, I should say, and um, it's going to highlight two, ve three very, very important people in our field, Laura Bridgman, Ann Sullivan, and Helen Keller. It will be taught by instructor Jennifer Arnett, who is a research librarian at the Perkins School for the Blind. So please come and join us tomorrow to hear all about these three fabulous ladies. Thank you again, Robin and Beth. And um, I'm going to say goodbye for now. But I know that those of you who like to hang out in the chat window, we, we oftentimes are able to answer some questions. I was going to say they're not going to get to because I actually have to go to a meeting that starts right this moment. So thank you all and we'll see you tomorrow. And see you tomorrow. You. Bye. Bye.